Okay guys, uh, good to see you again. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, guys and gals, I should say. And um, yes, so this week's video is going to be not too convoluted. It's all about Photoshop and image information. Because I was having a, a conversation with um, uh, one of my patron members last night, Gary. And we were discussing how he could see how large these documents were inside of Photoshop and you know I mean Photoshop's very 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 intimidating for an awful lot of people hence the popularity of Lightroom I'm just I mean this image is just one of the uh, exercises off my soon to be launched dodging and burning uh, course uh, which is taking an awful lot longer to produce than I was uh, first imagined. But uh, anyway, um, so this document does quite well to sort of il illustrate what we're going to be talking about today. And a lot of people use this little panel down here in the bottom bar. And we can click and hold on this panel and we can see that this image is has got a certain width of 4912 pixels by 7360 pixels in height and you can see it's three channels 16 bits per channel 300 pixels per inch however we do have this little fly out arrow here which gives you all the different options and of course the top one in the list is document size so i can see that we've got a multi-layered document here which is collectively if I save this now um, it's 1.93 gigs in size and that's simply because it's got all these layers on it the other thing that you can do to find out the um, statistics on your image and how big your image is um, is quite simple um, but it's something people don't use and a lot of people don't know that you can use it and you don't know how to customize it and it's the info panel here and i always keep my info panel docked in my top right hand panel over here in my uh, where my tools and various other bits and bobs are and if you can't see your info panel we go to window and we've got a list of all the different panels that we can have open and you can see i've got the info panel here so if you can't see your info panel you see it's gone now um from where it usually lives i just come and either click info or hit the f8 or function 8 uh, key i'm just going to click that and there it is but what i'll do is i'll just pull it over here so we can see what we're doing and we've got this little icon here as we've got with most panels in photoshop and if we click that little icon there we've got panel options and if i click on panel options woohoo now we can see we've got all sorts of things that we can display in the info panel uh, first of all we've got our first color readout this is our first color readout which you can see is in rgb and it specifies rgb there we could change that to grayscale or whatever we wanted to and um, the second color readout is in lab so here's our second readout and we could change that to cmyk and then hover over this document and i can see the little point that's on the front of that cursor and the color there is RG rgb 181 119 62 or cmyk 4% cyan 65% magenta 85% yellow and the k value which is your key color or black 1% to 0% so I'm just going to put that back to lab mouse coordinates not really of any interest our Richard's, our Richard's downstairs if you hear me say that because he works in Illustrator he'd go nuts at me saying that about mouse coordinates because he's always wanting to know where his uh, cursor is but anyway the principal image information that we as photographers might well be interested in is in this status information dialogue here and we can click the document profile to display that as well and the document dimensions if we've got any smart objects in the image stack or the layer stack 
it will give us a count of the smart objects it will also tell us if we've got any that are missing well you should be able to see that anyway just by looking at the layer stack you can display a measurement scale if you want to um, your scratch disk sizes um, the efficiency of the image uh, the timing that means how long it will take to save what tool you've currently got selected and also your layer count if you so desire and if we click OK and so I'll just bring this over here now so you can see we've got as we said before we've got a document size which is 1.93 gig saved as is if we flatten it out it will come out at about 206.9 meg it's in the pro photo rgb color space at 16 bits per channel there's its width and there's its height at 300 pixels per inch no missing smart objects no change smart objects i've got two scratch disks in this machine so one's 8.41 gig the other one's 24.5 gig the image efficiency and um, <laughs> I'm never quite sure what that means to be quite honest and I can't be bothered trying to find out but it says it's a hundred percent with an asterisk whatever that means it'll take 30 seconds to save it in its current layered format uh, we've got the hand tool selected at the moment which as you can see if I hover over the image and twirl around a little bit yes we've got the hand tool selected and the total layer count is 10 so if you are a info nerd yes that's really good really and truly all we're actually interested in is contained in this one down here which as you can see I've got set to image size now while we're talking about image size if I turn all these image enhancement layers off we've got this pair of layers here which are fundamentally this raw file and that raw file and because this image or that image you've just seen is part of a demonstration for uh, my dodging and burning course when you're going to do image enhancements through dodging burning that is the distribution of light and dark light and shade cool and warm colors and basically contrast and so I always tell people to work a sensible way and to remove as much of the global contrast from an image inside of Lightroom or whatever raw developer you're using before you take it into Photoshop. Because if there's too much contrast anywhere, or too much global contrast anywhere, um, it's really hard to get rid of so you might as well turn the contrast down completely so i got a raw file this one here and then i got a slightly darker one with a, a better sky and of course all i've done is send them over into uh, photoshop as layers and we can actually see a uh, duplicate of these two layers which is the fundamental building blocks of this image okay so there we go looks all right doesn't it hey eh? yeah can't do this in lightroom no matter what anybody tells you you can't not with the pixel precision and color precision and contrast precision that you can do it in photoshop this this is easy in photoshop it's bloody tedious um, but it's not difficult trying to do it in lightroom uh, would just be impossible and this image isn't finished yet we're about halfway through actually but anyway that's beside the point if we come back to uh, this image here or this two layer image if i was to delete the mask now you can see that we've got a collection of layers it doesn't tell you how many layers but over here in the info panel it's now telling you you've got two layers if i was to delete one of the layers we can now see that down here and in here our document is 206.9 meg that's because it's a single layer if i go command or control z to bring that other raw file back in now you can see that we're on two layers and the image size has jumped to 413.7 meg if I go command Z again to bring the mask back 
if it was to put a white mask on there I'll tell you what let's just um, delete that mask and put a white mask on now we can see we've got a white mask but it hasn't made any difference to the actual physical file size of the image however if I now go and get my uh, brush tool by hitting the B key and we want to be painting with black with 100% opacity and inside that mask if I just paint across the sky and I shall just bring it down here and this is a, a sort of a standard technique that I use for blending images I do not blend images with Lumenzia, um, Raya Pro um, Tony Kuiper I very very rarely do I blend exposures with luminosity masks because luminosity masks are pixel masks you could say that I'm using a mask which I am but it's a painted mask before this big fad and I will call it a fad because that's what it is um, before this fad of luminosity masks came to bear how the hell do you think we used to blend images before we used to blend them a simple straightforward way which was the digital equivalent of how we used to blend them uh, back in the days of wet photography yes nothing new how many more times have i got to tell you there is nothing new in digital photography there's just a thousand and one easy ways to skin the proverbial cat uh, whereas there used to be just one very difficult way to skin the cat back in the days of wet photography but anyway um, that's enough of me having an ancient ramble I've said it before and I'll say it again I'm 60 I've got an excuse okay right so I've just painted this mask in yep so we if I turn the mask off and then turn it back on again but all I'm just going to do is just feather it and there you go and we've got a perfect blend of those two images there now we'll take it up to 100% hold down the spacebar key we've got no haloing no nothing and there's next to no sharpening on these raw files either so there you go see a simple way to blend images and it uh, works every time well nearly every time so um, yeah there we go but to sort of get back to what we were talking about before if we go back to the info panel you now see because I've put some black in that mask it's actually added a little bit to the size of the image so there we've got our image um, or our two images put together uh, to give us the building block for this okay which you can see is massive 1.93 gig it will probably be about 2.2 2.3 2.4 when i'm finished so this is the best way of actually seeing how big your images are getting on you so i hope you found that little tip useful guys and i'm actually going to on the end screen i'd like you to keep watching this video to the end on the end screen i'm going to because i usually put a link to my patreon uh, page and there's also usually a link to another one of my videos but I'm actually going to link you to another video as well which is one I came across from a lovely guy who's a landscape photographer Steve O'Neans he's been up to uh, a, a little trip up to the Torridon area of, uh, of Scotland because it is a truly truly lovely and inspiring video so I do most strongly recommend that you click the link on the end board of this video and go and watch it anyway there you go i'm rambling and uh, nothing very educational there apart from maybe you might like that uh, sort of uh, little blending trick that i did there and don't forget of course this image looks really crappy because it's got no contrast in it but of course when we actually go to uh, do our full-blown dodging and burning workflow on it um yeah it <laughs> looks anything but flat yeah so um you know i like the image you might like the image you might not might not be your cup of tea but anyway there we go i'm going to shut up now and uh, don't forget go watch steve's video which will be 
up there somewhere all right okay guys see you in the next video until then toodaloo and thanks for watching and also cheers for subscribing as well all you wonderful people makes all the effort really worthwhile anyway toodaloo